What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Zapali here, hailing to you from Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois, a direct west suburb of downtown Chicago, and we're happy to bring you a new segment of the Seven Fear Squad called The Portfolio. In this segment, we'll dive into the current events from the week, the pros and the cons, and how this will ultimately affect your money. Like Under Armour says, we gotta protect this house. So let's get right into it. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. This week, we'll go over President Joe Biden's executive order calling for the cancellation of $10,000 of student loan debt, a move that could cost around $370 billion. With that type of help, we're definitely going streaking. We're going! Now, on his first day at office, President Joe Biden signed an executive action that directs the Education Department to extend the pause on federal student loan payments. Now, this is a good thing. However, this is only the first step as he wants to build on this and ask Congress to cancel $10,000 of student debt per person. Let's take a look at the pros and the cons of this action. Here's some of the pros. Student loan debt, which stands at a staggering $1.55 trillion of student loan debt, is the biggest category of debt Americans owe, aside from the mortgages. Now, that's probably what held back Bluto from the Animal House. While some debt is good, the cost of colleges and graduate school is skyrocketing. As a result, young people are borrowing sums of money they can't possibly repay, and many are using that money to pursue degrees at online or for-profit colleges with higher than average dropout rates, especially if you're in the Van Wilders of the world and stay in college for seven years. Now, we're not getting into the reasons why people should go to college or not. I've already done several videos of that on Seven Figure Squad. At the end of the day, the tact of canceling the debt is short-term beneficial, but it doesn't truly address the core of the problem. Now, student loans only started occurring since the 1970s. Back in the day, you used to pay for college up front and typically work the second job to make ends meet. I mean, Rudy Rudiger would have had a much easier time making the Notre Dame squad if there were some loans. Once colleges began allowing students to have credit, costs surged. Let's take a look at some of these charts. This is a recent phenomenon that is directly tied into the price of going to college. Now, let's get into some of the cons. Clearly, Houston, we've got a problem. But just like anything else, there are at least two sides to every story. If we were to make money disappear, where would it go? Well, under existing tax law, with student debt, you pay income taxes on any canceled debt. So, what does this mean? The total debt canceled is added then towards your income. So, if you made $50,000 and then 10,000 of debt gets canceled, you pay taxes on the $10,000, which would be at least $1,000. Unless you're on a team of 21 or play poker on the side, money is still an issue. Now, the law can change, but it's always important to plan for current laws and not hope for future ones. Also, a key reminder, this only applies to federal student loan debt. Does not apply to private student debt. While interest rates have dropped during the pandemic, they will not be affected by any of this legislation. It may make some sense then to refinance your student loans. Here's another aspect to this. Number one, it wouldn't make much that of a difference for nearly 30 million borrowers who owe more than $10,000. Many of them already went to graduate school and owe hundreds of thousands of dollars of student loan debt. Number two, it really wouldn't stimulate the economy. Student debt stops many from investing or buying real estate, which is a drag on the economy. But canceling a small amount of debt wouldn't change that, experts say. Number three, it wouldn't target the most vulnerable of borrowers. Canceling the same amount of debt for all doesn't account for the fact that many Americans with student loan debt are also some of the most well-educated and highest earning individuals in America. Number four, it wouldn't help future borrowers. Quote, the problem with forgiving student loan debt is that every day we're making new loans in this broken system, end quote, says Adam Looney, an economist at the University of Utah. You've not solved the problem. So let's take a look at this student loan debt forgiveness proposal. Here's my money smart thoughts on this. Number one, just like many political ventures, this doesn't really solve the root of the problem. And the root of the problem are costs of colleges and the return of investment of actually attending college. I like to see this forgiveness put to use in a more meaningful way and address the overall costs of going to college. Number two, just like any expenditure of any individual, 
all students must really analyze and unpack the real costs of attending college. Is it really the right choice for you to do? Back in the day, we were told to go to school, get good grades, and we would be secure for the rest of our life, right? But now, look at the price tag first. Is it worth it? And quick side note, I never went to college, and look at me, I panned out all right. First generation cash flow millionaire without a college degree. Number three, lastly, everything always has a price, even if it says free. While I'm all for the extension of non-payment of student loans until things get better, somebody will have to pay this bill. And typically, the middle class gets squeezed anytime some things like this happen. Maybe the solution is having these colleges actually pay their own tax bills, right? Or maybe even lower the cost of going to school. I don't know. But we all need to be cautious of everything that we hear. Free, 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 free. And remember, our economic system is based on free enterprise, not free everything. Hey, you my boy, Blue. Well, I hope you enjoyed this new segment of the 7 Fear Squad called The Portfolio. Please drop your thoughts, comments, and feedback in the comment section below. Meanwhile, make sure you check out this video I did about attending college right here. If you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. With that being said, I'm your money smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.